in a state championship setting. Uh, I tell you, I know a lot of people love college and pro sports, but it just doesn't get any better than a high school level. No, this is genuine and pure. It's very wholesome, and the individuals involved give everything they have. There's nothing at stake except them giving their very best. So we got a great match started already at uh, 103. Ethan Raley from Indian Creek and Casey Kenny from Jay County. 97 career wins in the Olympic Conference state title for the young man Casey Kenny from Jay County and uh, a Johnson County champion, a two-time middle school state champion, and Ethan Raley. Traditionally, you will see freshmen and sophomores at the 103-pound level. Yes, but I think at this point, Mark, they're not really freshmen and sophomores any longer. They've uh, achieved to get here, and they're wrestling veterans. And uh, I know uh, I don't know a whole lot about Casey uh, Kenny, but I do know Ethan Raley won the uh, Evansville Semi State, and I know he's already been named for himself uh, here in the Indianapolis area. He's undefeated, and he's done a nice job, and he's off to a lead. Well, it, it's interesting to note that you know you look at these records, 32 and 0, and also 47 and 0. For those of you that weren't with us for the introductions, uh, these young men basically wrestle hundreds of matches throughout the course of the year. Well, they certainly do, and uh, it's all, I think, in uh, preparation for this final night and final moment. It's every high school wrestler's dream to get here. So few make it. Just to be in the state finals event is fantastic achievement, but to get into the finals match in your respective weight class really says something about uh, the type of individual that you are to get here, and uh, it's a good match already. 40 seconds left, uh, down to 35 seconds, we should say, in period number one. For those of you that don't know, we'll have three periods, uh, you know, a couple of minutes apiece, if you will. 103 again is where we will start. Uh, we will crown about 13 or 14 state champions here this evening, down to 20 seconds on the clock. And uh, talk again, a, a, a bit of a stalemate there. Describe that situation, that, that call by the official. Things kind of stiffen it up a little bit and uh, just breaks the hold and gets them restarted. Well, I think the... Uh the man on top was, uh, really was riding well, but uh, he, uh, Kenny was trying to get out on bottom, and Rayleigh locked the leg and locked the arm and basically tried to stalemate his move and try to ride him out. And I think you'll see a lot of times in the finals, guys get a little bit more conservative because they're trying, they don't want to make that big mistake. So uh, it seems to be working according to plan so far. Down to six seconds remaining in the period, and the score remains two to nothing. And that'll end uh, the first session with your score remaining two to nothing. Now, talk about the toss of the coin here. It comes up green. Describe uh, the scenario from here as we get ready for the second period. Well, Rayleigh has the lead two to nothing, so there's nothing really for him to gain by taking uh, a down position or choosing position. He deferred to the, set, to the third period, and uh, Kenny took down. Okay, what's the mindset there? What what exactly is he looking to accomplish by choosing that position? Well, uh, he wants to score right now and try to get back into the match, and he has choice. Otherwise, uh, if he took top, then he would, I think, be playing into Rayleigh's hands. So it's just a, a pretty obvious call at this point by the coaches who give the signal, but I think these guys are accomplished enough. They know what to do, and uh, – he has really no choice but to go down and try to get a reversal or escape and a takedown or try to get back into the match. In a championship match, uh, going into planning a match, planning how you hope it goes, do you go into a mindset thinking uh, this is going to be a three-period match? Oh, I think so. Uh, you know, the falls do come from time to time, but for the most part, you better be ready to give your uh, everything you have for six minutes and then possibly overtime as well. So he's got a hook and a, uh, a bar arm right now, and he got a little bit high, and looks like escape's going to be awarded. Well, now, you know, I have seen times, we talked about this before we went on, that outer ring, uh, a lot of times you will see just about half the torso get out, and the guy blow the whistle, and that time both were almost entirely outside the line before they stopped play. Well, uh, if, if the supporting points of either wrestler is in, inside the uh, outside line, then, of course, the wrestling's will continue, but if uh, supporting points of one supporting point of either wrestler or both wrestlers go out, then, of course, it's out of bounds. They stop the match and go back. And in all your years, you've never disagreed with that call. Never, you? never. <laughs> I think that's a, coaches are bound to it all, so they will not question a referee. <laughs> you know, it's interesting to note we talked about the pinfalls. Okay, he's going to stand them both up there. Explain it's, that. It's a stalemate. Neither one could gain the advantage, get a takedown, and in, his, uh, in the referee's view, uh, there was no no way either wrestler could have, could get out of the stalemate or uh, gain advantage in their position. But uh, I think some of the fans 
uh, probably disagreed with that. Well, I mean, all the experts are sitting up here with us. Oh, sure. No yeah, question about that. Yeah, we got the best seat in the house. That, uh, I think that's there's about 10,000 of them right now. I can see much better than those guys. That's just now. like every other sport in the state of Indiana. Oh, my. Oh, my. Nice counter. And Ray, they caught him and got a takedown, too, and I believe he got near fall points as well. So that gives him a, a four to one advantage now as we get ready to, for the third period. Now, what's uh, what's the mindset for Casey Kenny of Jay County here as he trails four to one going into period three? Well, he's got to come for a big move. He did not get the near fall point, so it's four to one. So nice. he's got to try to come up with maybe a situation where he can put him on his back. He'll ride him for about a minute, perhaps. If that doesn't work, he'll probably cut him and then try to take him down and cut him again and try to catch up by ta getting takedowns. But so far, he's 0 for 2 in that regard, so I think he's going to work for a pin situation. He's got the uh, ankle hook now, and he's working on the upper body, but it's so difficult to uh, get a good wrestler like Rayleigh on his back, especially in this situation with a state title riding on it. Johnson County champion, a two-time middle school ch uh, state champion, talking about Ethan Rayleigh, a very impressive 32-0, and, and as we said in our opening comments, a freshman in grade only. By this point, he's a sophomore, no doubt about that in terms of his experience. Well, I think so, and uh, the amount of summer wrestling that he does, he's probably even higher than a sophomore in some respects. He's beaten some seniors to get where he or some upperclassmen to get where he is today, and uh, he certainly uh, is a gamer. Now he's getting in a neutral position. This will be a one-point escape if he doesn't uh, take Kenny down. But he, the referee's going to hold off and probably give and see if it's a reversal. And it's a good job by the referee not to award it, not to give one escape and a two takedown. He gave two reversal, and that's a correct call. So six to one now your score, just 30 seconds away from a state championship outside the ring, and they'll go back to the center now. Start to smell a little bit, isn't he? When you're up six to one with 36 seconds left, you can start tasting a little bit. Yeah, I think the coaches are probably starting to feel a little bit more than a wrestler. He knows he's got to go 30 more seconds, but coaches are starting to, uh, you know, get to that point where, that they truly want to. A lot of coaches never get to sit Matt's side and actually coach a wrestler in a state final match, and this is really an honor for them. It's an honor for both sets of coaches, but to uh, walk away the state champion, what a what a great tribute. Well, and, and as you, I mean, with the tremendous success that you folks had, I mean, it boils down to this. You know how losing feels, and you know how winning feels. <laughs> Winning's a lot more fun, so you want to do as much of it as you can, uh, and you never get tired <laughs> of it, do you? No, no. All victories are sweet, and uh, losses are painful, but you learn from them. And uh, Kenny is, Kenny's got to win. He gave up a reversal, and uh, our Randy gave up a reversal, and Kenny gave the escape. Too little, too late. Seven and three.